Thanks everyone for coming. I'm here to talk a little bit about the role of fiscal sponsorship in open source software. I'm, uh, my name is Andy Terrell. I'm the, well, I was formerly the president of NumFocus uh, through the last, up to the last few months ago when I've kind of transitioned out of that role. Um, and this, this talk will kind of center around some of the work NumFocus has done, um, but also like a broader community of like why it exists and, and so forth. Um, let's see here. So first off, like, I'd like to just kind of state that fiscal sponsorship is a thing that has been rising. We, you know, the software, open source software is very different from the 1980s when it started. And we kind of like sit back and say, well, how are we supporting it? And a fiscal sponsorship is one way that you support the ecosystem around the community that is building the software. And just to, here's a very small list. I mean, I think that um, when I kind of put together a report on this, I found like well over 50 uh, foundations um, that have come. And as you can see, there's a lot of different pieces to it. And we'll discuss a little bit about why there's so many pieces and so many things um, after I kind of establish what these things are and what they do. Um, why do, so I think, why do we need fiscal sponsorships? First and foremost, software teams have just grown in size and complexity. Uh, when I was a contributor at, at SciPy or the SimPy organization over 15 years ago, we had over 150 contributors. Now you look at something like Jupyter and they have, you know, probably in the order of 50 codes with each having dozens of people interacting with them. And so we've seen this kind of explosion in open source software contributors and maintainers and so forth. Um, second, like we're, we're crossing more borders. Uh, it used to be, you know, like Berkeley database was made in one university in one lab and, and GNU came out of MIT with one lab, but that's not how software works anymore. Like university boundaries don't make sense anymore. Sharing those costs, it becomes very difficult and legal borders really kind of get in the way sometimes. I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to get money to a contributor in a, a sensitive country or by the US standards, such as Iran or, or other places. And like, yeah, it's, it's, you end up hitting um, legal borders very quickly. Um, and the, this has created an undue burden on our current structures. They just don't exist in this ecosystem of supporting uh, this broad global community producing things like software. So up comes the fiscal sponsorship and let's, but before we dive into all the detail of fiscal sponsorship, let's just establish why we need legal entities for uh, software. And that's the, the idea that every software program needs a legal entity, but ones that get to that, get to a size, what do they establish? At the end of the, at the end of the day, it's very simple. You need some legal rights and obligations, whether an individual, a company, or an organization, and you need some way to establish establish that. Um, so, usually, when I sit down with projects, I ask very very few questions. This is who's responsible for your assets and liabilities. And the first question is like, oh, I just write code. Why do I have assets and liabilities? Uh, second, like, you know, who's speaking on behalf of your project? And if not, who? which if you don't have someone speaking on behalf of your project, how can I have an organization partner with you? How do we get, work together to make decisions and so forth uh, in, in hopefully in a, a fair and uh, transparent way? Um, and then, you know, what happens if you find out, you know, processes of your organization do not conform to legal standards? I think um, it's happened more than once uh, where the open source community has crossed boundaries that, that legal, uh, our, our legal structures uh, disagree with. Um, one example was very close to my heart when I was working. I've worked in Wall Street for a little bit in my life. And here's an example of Sergey Alexeyev, who was at Goldman Sachs and contributed open source software and then found himself at the center of an FBI investigation because he was contributing code that uh, there were bug fixes inside Goldman Sachs uh, while he was working at Goldman Sachs time. And so there were became a, a, a civil case that turned into a very real problem for a open source contributor. All right, so hopefully we've established that there is some legal entity there, but like, what is it, what do you need to become one? Well, let's, let's start a little bit like uh, stepping out of the software world a bit and, and think about something we've all wanted to do, um, whether we've been successful or not, and that's start a band. So, if you're going to start a band, like the first kind of thing you do is just you actually have a pre-launch. You decide I'm going to start a band. You start writing some songs. You practice your favorite instrument. 
Um, but really at this point, you're an individual, your music career stops here. It's a bummer, but it, you know, there's not really a lot going on. Um, you own some copyright, but you know, does that matter if it's something nobody gets to hear about it and things like that? So, um, so your liabilities are just like your personal debt for instruments and your assets are some copyrights um, and you're still very small, right? So come along, get your first gig. And now you have a shot um, at playing in front of people, having people understand what you do and you're sharing your work. Uh, you keep on doing this, you know, you keep on doing it on your own, turns into a recurring event. Uh, and, you know, maybe the covers weren't exactly licensed, but nobody cares. I mean, maybe you're using some, some pieces of music or other things that, you know, just fill in the, the, the bits of the, the gig that didn't work very well. Um, or you don't have enough content and so forth. Ah, you're just a kid making a start. You're still very small. Uh, but at the same time, now I have assets. This is my accounts receivable. I get a paycheck from that, those gigs. And I, but I do have to make these uh, weekly performances and so forth. Um, now you bring on a team, right? So now we're expanding our, our retinue. We're trying to find more people to, to fill out the show and get more songs together and make a bigger, a bigger uh, system out of that. Now you have a very real problem of sharing copyrights and how is that going to work? Um, and you have to kind of figure that out. And like, how many people, would, how many times do we know bands are like erupted because their copyright problems kind of uh, overcome the, overcame them. All right, now you're starting to notice all this debt you're getting because now you've got a band, you've got travel expenses, you have all sorts of, all sorts of um, issues that kind of come with just communication between those teams and so forth. Um, so you would decide to, hey, we got to start splitting up some of these liabilities um, and some share of those assets. So now we are no longer a solo person. We formed the entity of the band and we now have a liability of a salary and dividend to the people or, or dividend, however you want to put it, to the people who we're working with. All right. Along comes an imposter to your to your band. They start playing covers. And, and all of a sudden, when you were playing other people's covers back in these solo days, it didn't matter as much. But now these people are like taking your name. And you're a little bit upset about it. Um, well, you run to an attorney and you say, well, you know, it's really hard to litigate if you have very scant evidence of your name being associated with those songs. You say, well, my hard drive has a date on it, but those things can be faked and they have not as much weight in, in court as you might want. Um, so your attorney helps you understand like IP laws and across the different world, uh, the different legal zones and whatnot, and your copyright and trademark help protect your work. Um, so now we have registered trademarks and registered copyrights. And so now our assets have a little bit more legal weight to them and they can be uh, protected in court, if you will. Uh, so now you sign a big contract. Uh, one of your shows, an agent wants to work for you and you already have an entity. So it's very quick to sign that contract and you already have people to work with, hopefully the, the headliner of the band. And so you can get some royalties and profits from your concerts. So now I have both the band and the recording company working together. We've traded a license to our work for royalty fees. We have concert rights and we, you know, and we, but we do have some expenses and we were able to get a lot more money from concerts and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> at this point, you realize this is a lot of work <laughs> managing all the legal parts, all the um, assets and even knowing who to talk to sometimes. Um, so you want to keep this up or is it, you know, or do you just, quit your day job yet? How do I, how do I figure all these things out? So we bring on an administrator who helps us with all the sorts of planning, the budgeting, the helping sorts of things of, of, that's not making your music so that you can focus back on making your music. Um, uh, I, okay, so now we have an administration overhead, but we do have an asset, which is our business plan, which in some places is a copyrightable um, work. So going forward, so the start, the industry starts teaching, tweeting about your new gig, you got more sponsors, then you get endorsed and you get more practice time for the band. So now you have public media relations. Um, maybe we've all had some experiences on Twitter. Uh, those things have to be managed and uh, understood as well in, in a very controlled way sometimes, especially when you're talking about an entire entity. All right, so finally you wanna run your own event. You price the numbers and figure out you can do it yourself. Um, it turns out to be a lot more complicated. I think this is, Something we've definitely found in this open source world, like events are great at bringing people of like mind together, but the, the administration of these things. And so the administrator sets up a, what we call a professional employment organization. So we can hire people all over the world or wherever we want and handle insurance and helping people uh, get through the things they need in, a, in their um, professional role. So you keep rocking and let the business roll. And now we have event management. Um, uh, 
let's see here. Wait. So you look at all these things going on, and the I seem to have lost. All right, the uh, sorry about this. Oh, the zoom window is in my way. <laughs> there we go. So you look at this, and what's the difference between software and the band? Effectively, we have, you know, instead of registered copyrights, we we do have copyrights. We often don't register them. We do have, we don't maybe have weekly performance, but we do have maintenance. Most software developers are paid something, so there are salaries to understand. Open software, we we say we 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 don't need the 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 license fees because we want to be fair and give it away. But everything else in this plan should exist in software as, as, as well and for open source. So managing all these things are like the place where fiscal sponsorship kind of comes in and helps you arrange and manage these projects um, without the personal. So fiscal sponsorship was an arrangement, but you can go to the National uh, Council of Nonprofits and arrangement to attack, attract donors, um, but also work within the, the IRS for a US code in some places, it's more of like just a charity, um, but the idea being like we can create an entity out of this organization and give it a uh, a, a, a fiscal plate. I'm running out of time, but uh, further, but at the end of the day, we talk about the benefits of these organizations in helping organizational health, promoting project governance, uh, fiscal services, controlling your money, helping you with legal services and, and whatnot, and advocating about on your behalf um, at, in the broader community, such as uh, courts and briefs and so forth. Uh, with, with that, I'll just invite you to come check us out at NumFocus and um, kind of meet our team and see, you can see more of what we do. Thank you.